Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Monkey Scrolls podcast. This week I tricked my friends into watching the movie Phantasm. It's uh, personally one of my favorite B-horror movies and I don't know, it kind of fits the theme of October. Uh, if you don't know us, I'm Joe. Uh, I'm Keeper. I'm Caleb. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this film. Uh, before we get into it, I'll give a little... You know, a little rundown of about it. Um, it was uh, made in 1979, made by Don Coscaleri. I'm definitely saying that wrong. There's no way I have it right. Um, he has directed, written, edited, and photographed is part of his uh, credits for this movie. And he's done a few other movies, um, all the Phantasms, because there's five of them. Uh, for some reason, uh, a movie people might actually know is one called Bubba Hotep. It has, um, what's his face? Uh, Bruce Campbell. It has Bruce Campbell in I couldn't remember his name. And he also directed the Beastmaster movie in 1982, <laughs> which, uh, was hot trash. So, there's not much to, uh, be really expecting out of this movie, but I thought it was a, it's, it's a really fun little it's a fun little jaunt, and uh, I'm heavily nostalgic for it. nostalgic for it. Uh, what do you guys think? If you wanna, you wanna start us off, Caleb. What do you think of it? You seem to have the most dislike for it. Yeah. So nostalgia's got to be the only selling selling point for this movie. Like I can't. I don't even know. Like even by <laughs> '70s standards, I can't be that hype on it. You know, I could see how if you're a kid in the 70s, you would enjoy it because, you know, everything in the world was new and gas cost five cents a gallon. But, like, I don't know. I thought it was a nightmare, but not in, like, the scary kind of way. More in the, like, having to watch it for an hour and 29 minutes kind of way. Okay. So I had a, a different impression. So I I, kind, I appreciated how, like, schlocky it was. It was, like, uh, I mean, there wasn't, like, great acting jobs being done in this. The story was kind of all over the place. And by the end of the movie, I didn't really know what to think. I liked it, but my initial reaction was like, what the hell was that? And I had rented the movie for like four bucks, three bucks, however however many bucks it costs on Amazon to rent movies. But I rented it, and then after I watched it, I bought it so that I would have it. That's one I need, for the team, baby. One for the team. I need to rewatch it. And I didn't dislike it. But I've got some damn questions. All right. So but, <laughs> so the moral of the story is there's this woman who's a brother fucker going around fucking all the brothers. But it turns out she's actually an eight foot tall, tall man named Tall Man. <laughs> and what she does is she kills these brothers. And it's suspected maybe the mother and father, too. Who knows? They're taking everybody. And uh, she's actually this tall man who's not a crazy 70s blonde woman. And takes their bodies and turns them into these little munchkin zombie slaves to what? They're aliens, too? Okay, so that's the mostly fuck, right. <laughs> yeah, they're aliens, too? I don't know what the fuck's going on. That's my big confusion point was... They're inside of the mortuary, and they find these barrels full of these dwarves. Just get the dwarves in them, yeah. And and they go through these two metal like it's uh, a tuning, tuning fork. rods, the tuning fork. Portal. Yeah, grow up like the one on the guitar dude is foreshadowing. Grow up. <laughs> right. So here's my biggest question: What the f what the what? My head is hurting. Think what is that portal they go through? What's that other dimension? Where they just go to this dune planet where the dwarves are rolling the barrels and they're just like, they're ready. Okay. This is where they go. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, that's not really flushed out till Phantasm 4, the origin story. No, you're not wrong, though. It's not flushed out till <laughs> Phantasm 4. See, they oh don't, my god, they don't, I've never like, seen that shit. Like, like Phantasm 2, it, it, ha it has the fucking, the ball and the, the dwarves and the tall man. And 3 is like... They're like, uh, the tall man's from a different dimension, kind of. And then four, they, like, really get into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Later. What'd you, you say? Fucking, 
I'd have to rip my dick before I watch four more of those fucking movies. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never press play on that shit in my life again. But the the rest of the movie is like a it's a B film horror movie, and you got the stables of the the blood and the the titties and then the yellow nacho cheese fingers. Hell yeah, yellow nacho <laughs> cheese fingers. It it was that part though where they're in the mortuary. And those guys see that other dimension that I was just like, what? What? Because I was on board the whole time until that happened, and they don't explain it further. Okay, and then, like, what? yeah. And then what the fuck was the ending, too? Because then it's like, oh, fucking Mike, you were just dreaming. Reggie's alive. Okay, so it was a dream, but Reggie's alive. But then the dude pops out, and he's like, it wasn't a dream, you little shit. And he takes <laughs> through a mirror to hell or whatever the fuck, and it's like, it was a dream or it wasn't? Because if it was a dream, Reggie's alive, that makes sense. But if it wasn't a dream, Reggie got stabbed by the brother fucker. Okay, so let's let's break this down a little bit. Uh, I will call myself the self-proclaimed uh, phantasm expert. Yeah, get canonical on us. Okay, so the the movie, we, we touched upon how there's the crazy 70s blonde chick that everyone's fucking out in the cemetery, which, yeah. you know, that's kind of hot. I'm having a good we'll time there. We will refer to her as the brother fucker. Yeah, the bro okay, so we'll call her the brother fucker. Um, so the brother fucker is a f form that the tall man uses to seduce um, people, you know, young men to turn into slaves for his world that he comes from, the, the like, dune desert planet. And these slaves, you know, if you younger men tend to be, you know, strong and, you know, all that fucking cliche shit, you know, you're, you know, he's a strong young man. And so, you know, that's kind of their reasoning behind it. I, I, I'm thinking you know, they really don't ever explain a lot, like ever in the whole series. Um, but so he, they're in the, <laughs> they're in the, uh, the cemetery fucking, he uses it to you know, get people that he can turn into slaves. We didn't talk about how, or you guys didn't really mention the beginning. He's not fucking one of the brothers. It's like their friend, you know, it's like, they're like old high school buddies, him, uh, Reggie, who's one of the main characters. Um, Jody, uh, is one of the other main characters. And then, uh, Mike, he's the younger brother. He's prob he's like the main character throughout the whole series. Pretty um, sure Tommy was her brother, too. Tommy is not. Tommy is their friend. Mm. And Reggie's a friend, too. Mm. I think you have paid attention to the movie. Mm. <laughs> but so I she, don't think that was clear. I mean, sure, it's whatever. It wasn't clear, but... Mm. I, um, anyway, so he, he, he... The tall man kills him, and they go to the funeral, and then... <laughs> and then they're at the funeral, and Mike is secretly like watching his brother everywhere he goes because their parents have died recently i think they say like in the last two or three years they died in a car mm -hmm. crash and so mike is like obsessed with following his brother jody uh around everywhere so he doesn't leave him because he thinks that he's gonna leave him i don't know why he thinks that but after everyone leaves mike's still there and he watches the tall man lift up tommy's whole fucking casket like it's like it's a bag of groceries, like it's nothing, and put it into uh, the hearse, and that just scares the shit out of him. But then it just jumps to Jody being seduced by the the, the blonde chick from the beginning. Like <laughs> they don't go into anything else. Yeah, there's no there's there's no care that went into creating this. No, um, <laughs> this is... what movies do where a kid is like yelling out all the red flags in the world where they're just like something's going on guys it's the end of the world and everyone's like you're a stupid fucking kid i'm not listening to you and the kid's just like there's evil jawas tearing people apart at the cemetery and the brother's like you're an idiot little kid who's following me around it's like no they were in the garage jumping on the car i was working on and the bro this is an actual line the brother says are you sure it wasn't the retard from up the street? Like, nobody's just listening to the kid who's just like, I saw a bunch of horrifying things. And they're just like, no, 
you're just a kid. I'm not listening to you. I did I did expect when he had the nacho cheese finger in the box from to open it for it to be gone or melted. Uh but there was just a finger in the box and he's just like, Okay, I believe you. Yeah, that was <laughs> when it ended. But where... no 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 no. It doesn't end there though. Cause they open where... the box later and it's a fucking it's a stuffed fly thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a fly beetle hybrid monster thing. <laughs> With yeah. the cheese. Making the worst face. buzzing sound, yeah. <laughs> it looks like shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Just I, my point was nobody believed the kid yeah. at all. Till the kid's just like, Well, I've got a severed finger in a box and it's moving. And the guy's just like it, even then he's just like, You're you gotta show me that. I still don't believe you. Oh, now I believe you. But now it's a bug that's flying around and causing a ruckus in the house. Well, the big brother, who I've dubbed the William Shatner knockoff, (laughs) is, uh... Okay. That dude's a fucking cuck the whole movie. And he just, like, at the halfway through, he's like, I better go help him. And he's just like, okay, let's give this 12-year-old boy a fucking shotgun and tell him, like, make sure you kill no warning shots. He's like, all right, I know you're 12, but I need you to kill immediately. Dude, that's such a good scene because he's loaded up all these guns and he gives him the shotgun. And behind him, over the fucking fireplace, is like a Civil War rifle, too. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, what is up with this family? What is, what is, what's going on? Okay, we didn't even touch on my least favorite part of the whole movie. On that note of guns and weird shit, is where he sticks a fucking shotgun shell on a hammer and explodes a door. Dude, he takes he takes the primer out and puts the thumbtack in, and it it hits it it sparks the primer thing or the little uh, the striker. It t- he takes a little striker out and hits the primer and fires it off. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's a it's a. Not only is it like it looks terrible because it's it's bad when he hits the door and it it's a puff of white smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that part is so extra because you're a kid with a shotgun shell and a hammer. And you, you MacGyver an explosive to break out of your locked room. It, I mean, the alternative would have been to break your little window. Right? And Why out. didn't he break the window? There's yeah. a, there's something else else that happens. How the door is locked? Because it's not just like, all right, let me lock the door. His brother shoves a screwdriver into the door jam, but the door opens inwards. Yeah, so they, that part was so sloppy. It made me laugh really hard. It's it, it, it's you know, like I said, this is a nostalgia movie for me. I used to watch it with uh with my dad a lot. He'd always put it on and uh in the movie like it, it, Mike's shown riding around on like a dirt bike and they've got this cool muscle car. It's an old Barracuda and shit like that. So like that that always you know that was something that my dad really liked because he likes that type of stuff and then it was it's a fucking it's a b movie so a lot of it is bonding with my old man and nostalgia of it um you know something that we haven't touched on yet too is after he sees the tall man carry tommy's cat put tommy's casket in the hearse he goes to this fucking psychic yeah, yeah it's not a psychic that's his grandma and it's that's just, my grandma. And it's it's just some old lady. Well, a bl- a, a blonde girl answers the door. Um, some I don't know. She's not very important, and she's got a star on her cheek, like a, it looks like a tattoo. And I think it's they're trying to imply it's like a birthmark or something, maybe. And he's like, "Oh, can I talk to your grandma? I have to know the future, or whatever." And he <laughs> he goes and. She has to fucking wheel out grandma because grandma's a thousand and ten and stuck in a wheelchair and can't talk. She doesn't say anything. She like whispers to the little girl when they uh when he asks his questions. But grandma's also got a fucking like tattoo of a star on the middle of her forehead. I don't know what they're going for with that. That's how I felt about most of the movie. It was like, how did they even come up with this and why? Why? <laughs> Well, what ever, about you, where he like you ever, stri- yeah. he's you ever been on the come down from LSD on in the seventies, bro? That's how that movie came out. They straight yeah, up rip, uh, rip Dune off too. The black box comes out and they're like, "Put your hand in it." <laughs> he's like, "What's in here, what's huh?" There? 
<laughs> oh, <Damn>. this hurts. <laughs> and she just, she might as well have said the fucking Bene Gesserit line in complete and just been like, fear is the mind killer. Because she's just like, fear, fear is what's causing you pain. Don't fear. <laughs> That part pissed me off, too, because I was like, okay, he's going to fucking see through the fucking veil and get through this. At the end of the movie, he's like, okay, don't fear. Some headstones popped up. I'm all right. He takes a fucking step and then falls in fucking quicksand with these zombie hands pulling him down. And it's like, what was he not fearing for? He didn't fucking... He just don't fear, man. He didn't He didn't use that to win a single exchange. He's like, don't fear. Still gets ripped down by zombies. There's like, don't fear. And he points a knife at fucking... The brother fucker, and it's like, I don't know what the fuck was going on with that movie. No, it's it's yeah. it's a hundred percent all over the place at all times. Yes, yeah. it was I, all over the place. And what I didn't really like was that like there's no rules for the supernatural powers of the tall man. It's just the kid is running at some t- at some points, and just weird, random, paranormal stuff is happening around him. And it's like, what part of this is the tall man? Is is there something to the cemetery grounds? I don't know what's going on. And at any point, like you said, anything could happen where hands are grabbing him out of quicksand. There's a flying metal ball with blades on it that with drills no in your head. There's just there, zero exposition in this evil, whole movie. Yeah, there's evil Jawa midgets running around. I don't. I didn't know what was happening half the time, <laughs> and it was crazy. Um, there were some cool shots though. Oh, yeah, there yeah, some talk about cool that. Like, what was your favorite scenes? You know, my favorite scenes were probably inside of the mortuary where they stack the bodies, where they've got that weird marble wallpaper. Mm-hmm. And then there's a cool scene where the kid and the tall man stand off, and they, you don't know what's going to happen. And then the kid just books it, and the tall man runs after him really awkwardly. Uh, that part, I really liked. I don't know why. It just... It stuck with me. I remembered it. Um, I don't know. What about? What's your favorite scene out of that movie? Oh shit, man! I think one of my favorite scenes has to be, um, dude. The shotgun scene is classic. I can't. I can't get over that. He puts a thumbtack in a shotgun shell and it and a hammer. That's pretty good. Um, when they first go to the, they find the like, the portal thing too. Um, and they open it and it, it opens to fucking Arrakis and you're like, and it, there's just no explanation why, like, what's So your favorite on? parts are my most confusing parts, because uh, the kid could have broke out of his room with the hammer instead of, like, MacGyvering an explosive, and then the weird portal room. So, your favorite parts, I was the most dumbfounded waiting for, like, explanation. <laughs> okay, so... I think my absolute favorite part though is definitely the 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 silver ball scene where he's there cuz the the you can't you can't deny that the mortuary scenes they look cool they're framed really well the you know and a mortuary's fucking creepy no one likes to go to a funeral home unless they're some type of sick fuck but um you know they're all framed really well and he's running down this hallway that seems like it's way longer than it is because of it's just so similar everything looks the same it seems never ending, almost like a maze, and it's this ball that he doesn't know what it's going to do necessarily until he gets grabbed by this fucking dude who comes out of nowhere. And when he dodges it, it digs into this guy's face and drills into his skull and starts shooting blood out the back. But the mortuary scenes are, pro- are hands down the best part, just because it's, it's like an actual good like cinematography moment it, it, things are framed well it's not super confusing well it's like confusing in the way that it should be because you're supposed to be you know with mike in that scene running through this nightmare place basically of death it definitely felt like the the director had some scenes and he had ideas in terms of like <clears throat> oh what if a cool flying ball is killing people and what if there are Frankenstein monsters or not? It sounds like he had a lot of really cool ideas that he then had to write a story around. And he just included everything. No, Nothing was left un- undone in his mind. He didn't... Because he, you could have like whittled it down to like 
two or three things and made the movie more cohesive. But he's just like, no, there's no limits to the tall man's power. He's going to do everything. His chopped off fingers are going to turn into bugs. Hands coming out the ground, flying machines. He did. He just did everything. He uh, he didn't give himself a filter. And I don't know if that makes the movie better or worse. Well, I think, I think it... uh, the biggest part too. So it's you know it's this guy's like third movie he ever made. He's twenty five years old. It was shot on like you know everything about this movie is your like standard B movie cliches, but. I feel like it's one of the early enough movies where it starts them. It's made seat of your pants for $300,000. They're only filming on weekends. It's almost just a bunch of friends and amateur actors who are in it. So it, it definitely shows it's, it, it, it wears itself on its sleeve. If you know what I mean? Like it yeah, is I'm... cheap and it looks cheap and it feels mm -hmm. like it's a cheap B movie, but to me in enough of a way where it stayed fun and I wasn't upset watching it. Cause there's some bad B movies. There's, you know, for every one phantasm, that's an okay B movie that it might be confusing and not make sense. There's also the room, which is a fucking nightmare movie. It's, it's fun to know that with no talent, vision, skills, or foresight that you could make something charming with your friends. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's really what it is, too. <laughs> like, it's, like, yeah, he made, there's there's five of these movies that he got to make, yeah. and even though they can only get worse, uh, it's probably fine. The truth it's, is, cool, it's cool that they could do it. They, 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 the story, because they, he figures out, oh, people actually like this thing, because it didn't do bad in theaters. It was, uh, it made twelve million dollars in seventy nine off of three hundred thousand dollars. So, it, it, I mean, no. it's not fucking, it's no Marvel movie, but it made a a pretty good amount of movie for a twenty five year old filming with his friends and amateur actors, and. It, I mean, it really started his career because he did Beastmaster after, which isn't a good movie at all. But people want, you know, it's a licensed property. They gave him nine million dollars to make that movie. He made five others. You, you guys ever seen John Dies at the End? It's a pretty no, good movie. It. It's a, it, it's a pretty good movie. He directed that. So it's it, this is also, you know, it's an interesting like. Uh, snapshot of you know someone everyone has to start somewhere and sometimes you make phantasm yeah and you know like i said in the 70s when the world was new like you could do anything yeah gas is five cents and everything's exciting yeah with your friends and what your friends brings to the table oh what if we do like a three minute full song jam session and on a front porch yeah there's just that just happens for no reason so for me, for me, the whole film really can get summed up with one scene. And it's the scene where after the kid wakes up for the dream and he's going to bed, Reggie's just like, I better fucking strum some chords and sing a song. And he's singing and humming this melody that probably sounds fine. But while he's singing and you hear the audio from him and the guitar, there's terrible fucking keyboard horror movie music playing while he's singing. And it's just dissonant, disjointed, terrible sounding, and awful to look at. This movie could summed up be summed up by one scene for me with uh, when he sees the tall man lift the casket, and then it cuts to him taking the binoculars he's using to down, and he mouths, "What the fuck?" <laughs> the movie did a lot of really funny cuts to the kid's face to to show what you're supposed to be feeling, uh -huh. like when he's spying on his brother in the cemetery, and it just cuts to him, and he smiles like. Eh. He's just it's like, all right, my brother's getting some right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I really like when the tall man is just. This part stuck with me. He just says, boy. <laughs> he, he loves the boy. 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 And it just initiates a chase sequence. I, that cracked me up. <laughs> it was good. I think um, if you put this movie through a filter and got rid of all the parts I didn't like and kept the ones I did like. It would be like a 30 second movie of the scenes where you could see the kids Adidas sneakers. <laughs> yeah, that, that plays that plays for you. Yeah, it, it would it, it would end it would end right at the part where the thing takes the sneaker off his foot and the credits would just fucking roll. 
Um, and I know you guys have absolutely zero history with this movie. I'm very glad you guys watched it. I appreciate it because uh, I knew what I was getting into when I watched it. And I tried to warn you guys, but I don't think I warned you quite enough. Oh, it's no pride. I like plenty of terrible things. You guys just ask yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so it's no biggie. I'm not surprised. It just, it. I, I didn't have the nostalgia, so it didn't track for me. But yeah, definitely. Uh, if you didn't have, if you don't have the nostalgia, the nostalgia, or even the, uh, you know, the like B movie tendencies, like because B movie horrors are different than watching just like a normal B movie because there's yeah. a heavy amount of cheesiness and suspension of disbelief they expect you to have when the blood mm-hmm. looks like nacho cheese. Yeah, I did. I did all the. I did all the like. Uh, what are they called? The Toxic Avenger, that company. Yeah, uh, uh, trauma films. I did all the trauma films like in high school and stuff. So I got all of that B horror movie shit out of my system. So now it's like harder for me to watch. I, I kind of peaked at Thanks Killing. <laughs> I think everyone should peek at that movie. Yeah, nice tits, bitch. <laughs> so like, you know, maybe that's the next one. Kiefer, you seen Thanks Killing? I think we watched it together. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, and no, you <laughs> didn't warn us. You didn't warn us for this movie, but I did end up. I mean, I liked it uh, for all the things that that made me laugh, and also for some of the cool shots from the movie. Like, there's some cool scenes that <clears throat> I don't know. The the whole every every frame is a photo sort of mentality. There were some cool scenes that that were kind of artistic. But, I mean, overall, the, the movie's probably pretty average. Yeah. Um, uh, but I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, uh, one thing, you know, uh, I always thought was interesting about this series of films, because, like I said, it's nostalgia bullshit for me. Um, all of the movies star the same actors playing their characters. That's uh, cool. So there's like an actual continuation, except the second one. Mike is played by a different actor, and I'm I don't know why he did that. Uh, did they bring him back for the third or what? Yeah, Mike the, hmm. the which also the actor that plays Mike and Reggie, their names are Mike and Reggie, so they really stretched there to, you know, uh, for that. But yeah, he he's not in the second one. They got a different actor. It, you know, this movie did relatively good for a cheap B movie. So their next one had a bigger budget and I'm not sure if maybe the original actor for Mike wasn't available or they wanted to try and hire someone who had more acting cred. Uh, that one, I don't honestly know. I didn't, I couldn't find a whole lot when I was doing my little bit of research. Um, but you know, I, I, I like that there's a whole story and it's fucking nutso and makes no sense. Even once you start getting deep into it, um, so, but to me, uh, if I had to, you know, well, let's say, would you guys suggest this movie? Caleb, would you suggest it? Uh, only if I truly hate the person I'm suggesting it to. Okay. Uh, Kiefer, would you suggest it to someone? You know what? I would suggest it to certain people. Okay. Um, but overall, I, you know what? I would. I would recommend that you watch it and choose whether or not you like it for yourself. Yeah, I, I I can see that. You know, I I would recommend this movie if any. You know, it's it's October, spooky October. I would always, you know, yeah. if someone says I want to watch a B horror movie. I'd say, dude, you got to watch Phantasm because it's like it's it is the B mo- horror movie to me. But that's just uh, that's a hundred percent from nostalgia. Maybe. What would you rate it out of ten? Uh, as an actual movie, I'd say it's pretty average. You know, maybe like a five or a six. It's not. It's not going to shatter your fucking world. You know, we talked about the story doesn't make sense sometimes, but there are some good scenes and there's world building that has a payoff. But they didn't know it was going to uh, when they made this. So yeah, I'd say it's average five or six. You know, I'd agree. I'd say I'd say five or six. If they had some somebody doing editing. <clears throat> and uh, made it a little bit more coherent. I could say it was like a solid six, maybe a seven. But as it is, I'd I'd say it's probably a five. Okay. You, so for me, it starts 
at one based on pure quality. Um, it goes up to a solid like eight and a half once those Adidas sneakers come into frame. Mm-hmm. Um, it dips down to 1.5 when the sneakers get ripped off uh, in the middle of the movie. Uh, so I'm going to settle around 1.5. Okay, one. Uh, so we got two averages. We got two fives and a 1.5. That's uh, not great, but you know, this is definitely <laughs> this is definitely a movie you have to watch and judge for yourself. Because uh, I love it. It's, yeah, I want you guys to watch it. Everybody, go watch it right now. <laughs> it's got a special place in my heart. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think that's it for our little episode uh, this time. I, unless there's anything more from you guys. Um, I might have picked our next movie because there's one I wanted to watch and it looks like it has a terrible rating. So we might go for that. Well, perfect. Well then, uh, we'll, we're going to keep up doing these weekly, uh, when we can, we do have personal lives and, uh, real world things that we have to do. Um, hopefully not forever, but you never know. Um, so yeah, let's see what, what are we going to do next week then, Caleb? Uh, so I happen to be a big, uh, wrestling fan okay. and I found out that there's a 2019 horror movie called CM Punk called girl on the third floor that I've been wanting to watch. So let's watch that. I have absolutely no idea what that is, but I'm down. I'll watch it. I'll watch it by next week. Yeah. Girl on the third floor. All okay. right. So next week we'll be talking about girl on the third floor. Um, you couldn't see me just now when I heard you suggest that, but my uh, face went into my hands as I tried to hold back tears. <laughs> Have you seen it? Or... No, but I saw the trailer. So, there you go. <laughs> um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, you guys watch Phantasm. You 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 pulled through this one, so it looks like I'll be watching. What's it called? Girl on the third floor. Girl on the third floor. Oh fuck! Re- okay. Revengeance is mine. Well. Join us next week for Girl on the Third Floor. Uh, Thanks for listening, guys.